Chag Sameach, everybody. Hope you're enjoying your Yom Ha'atzma'ut. I want to read a Midrash with you that relates to the second of the two parshiot that we're going to read this week, Parshat Mitzorah. The question that Chazal is trying to grapple with is what, what, what causes a person to get Sarat, this leprous skin condition? What actions? So they look at the word mitzora, uh, and they say mitzora is a contraction maybe of hamotzi shemra. You know, uh, um, someone who speaks ill, who speaks evil, uh, who puts forth evil into the world. Matsara, they're looking for evil opportunities. And the Medrash names the snake from the story in the Garden of Eden as a prime example of what happens to someone, or in this case an animal, when you speak Lashon Hara or Motsi Shemra, you, you speak ill uh, of others and you speak in a way that um, slanders someone else. With the first snake, we see this. Because the, the snake spoke about his creator. Therefore, the snake was afflicted with Sara'at. What did the snake say? Levi said, The Pasuk in, in the, the third chapter of Bereshit says that. The snake told Chava, for God knows that on the day you eat from it, and your eyes will be opened in a way that they aren't right now, and you will be like God who understands the difference between good and evil. You will have God-like powers. Amar lahem. So he said to them, Kol uman soneet chaveiro. What is it? So, yeah, this, so far, we see the deceit here. There's certainly deceit in what the snake was doing. No one's going to argue that. The snake was trying to be deceit, deceitful towards Chava. And indeed, he succeeded in this, in, in, in pushing Chava to make a decision that was not a good one. But how did he speak Lashon Hara against God? This doesn't seem like Lashon Hara against God. He maybe is uh, saying that, you know, uh, uh, if you just read the Pshad here, he, it looks like, you know, he's saying that God knows the reason he told you not to do it is because of this, which may not have been, which was not the truth. Um, and so is that exactly Lashon Hara, though? How did he slander God in a, in a very deep way that he got punished? So the Medrash <clears throat> explains what happened a little bit more in this conversation between Chava and the snake. So the snake said to Chava and to Adam, it appears, Amar Lahem, Koluman Sonet Chavero. Any artisan hates his friend, his fellow artisan. So if you're in this business and you have a competitor right down the block, there's a natural rivalry there. Livrot at Olamo. And so when God created the world, Min Ha'ilan Hazah Achal Varat Olamo. He he um he created the world. He ate from that tree first. God ate from that tree, and then he created the world. So afatem. So the snake said to you guys, you guys, eat from the tree. Vatem yicholim livrot elamo olam kamo. You can start to create worlds just like God. And that's why God told you not to, because he you guys would be competitors, and he doesn't like having competitors. So he told you not to eat from the tree. So. Let's spell out the Lashon Hara here. Amar lo HaKadosh Baruch Hu. God, after this whole incident, said to the snake, Atasi part of Lashon Hara. You have spoken ill of me. Sof chalil kot End of the day, you're going to end up with sarat. Your punishment is you're going to have a skin condition that will not be pleasant. Shenemar, as it says in the Pesach, uh, in uh, the third chapter of Bereshit, Vayomer Hashem Elokim El Anachash. God said to the snake, Yasita Zot, because you did this. He spoke Lashon Hara, Arura Tamikol Habeima. You will be more cursed than any other animal. But how did the snake get cursed? 
Bitsarat with this skin condition. Shinemar kitsarat mam ereti. Now here's an interesting thing. This is I, I am not an expert, but I don't I have my doubts on this one. The Madrash makes a connection here in terms of the root of the word mam eret. The Pasuk is describing Tsarat Mam Eret, um, which literally uh, um Tsarat Mam Eret, uh, which is in this we're gonna read in this week's parsha probably means something uh, like it's a, a malignant lep leprosy. Um, but anyways, the root um, sounds like Mameret and Arur have a certain similarity. And at least you can hear a little bit of the, the, the uh, connection in terms of the letters. And so that's how we know that Sarat is a curse is a negative thing. It's a punishment. Uh, and in particular, it's a punishment for speaking ill of others, speaking in a way that is uh, that you're slandering someone else. Amar Rav Huna Barshem Rav Yoshub and Levi, Haslaim Shehein Al Hanachash, the scales on the snake, Zohit Sarato, that is its Sarat, that is its skin condition. God didn't apparently, according to this midrash, originally create snakes with the scales like the we, you know, if you uh, ever meet a snake, uh, you'll know that a lot of them have those. Uh, they all have like that, that scaly. I don't know if the right word here is skin. It's not skin. They have that's their that's their out that's their outer layer. It's that the scales. This is really the key and the crux of the message I think of this midrash. All other people, when we get to Olam Haba after a long life, 120 years, um, all of our blemishes, they're going to be healed. Um, the hope is that uh, there is an atonement done. And, and that ultimately, you know, the things that we did wrong in this world, um, hopefully there is um, a way for us forward uh, in the world to come. To move, to have that be behind us, to not sort of let that define us anymore, those actions. But the nachash, the snake, will not even be healed, as it were, in the next world. For having spoken, Lashon Hara. Shinemar aruratami kol habehema. You will be more cursed than any other animal, any other being out there. And that means even in Olam Haba, even after this world. Now, what does this all mean here? Let's keep going here just for another few moments. Mikan shakol mitrapim. But from here we learn that all um, can be um, healed, but the snake, the snake cannot be healed ever again. And the Madrash at the end finishes and says, what caused all this for the snake? This terrible fate? Al sha'amar lashon, lashon hara. Because the snake spoke ill of God. There's a really important message here. Aside from the interesting part, right? Why is the snake, uh, um, what was so terrible about the snake? It wasn't just simply the deceit, it was Lashon Hara. They spoke about God, and that, let's spell out the Lashon Hara. What did he say about God? He said about God, that God doesn't have his powers if it were not for the tree. But the tree is really the ultimate force in this world. And that if you eat from the tree, you could be like God. That is a claim against God that is slanderous. God doesn't get his powers from somewhere else. He doesn't get it from the trees. Yet, he claims that God is not as mighty as he appears. You could be like him too. If you just find the tree, and here it is, eat from it. And the reason God's telling you not is because he doesn't want competition. And that is slanderous. God does not want competition with us. God wants us to succeed. God created the world, as I spoke about recently, so that we could complete it and perfect it, as I spoke about actually on Monday, to make the world a little better than we found it. God doesn't want competition with us. Not because, not because he's not, he can't handle the competition, but that's not, that's not the relationship that we are to have with God. It's a, it, <laughs> that attitude is not going to get us anywhere. And so we have here 
Lashon Hara. And what we see is that the snake is never able to heal himself from this, even in the world to come, even when he's gone. I think it speaks to the damage that Lashon Hara can do to other people. For sure, we can talk about that. But more than how much it sometimes can hurt other people, Lashon Hara can hurt ourselves when we speak it. When we become known as a gossiper, we become known as the person who, who says evil things, hurtful things about other people. True or not true. Right? Well, we speak in a, in, a, in a hurtful way. Sometimes Lashon Hara is, is not Lashon Hara because we're trying to, for people's safety or something like that. You have to sort of let people know what's the truth about, some, about somebody. But when we just speak ill about somebody, we don't just hurt them, we hurt ourselves in a way that is hard to heal from because people may look at us in a certain way that we're a gossiper. And I don't know if we always think about Lashon Hara in that way, that it hurts us, it hurts who we are, it hurts our own perception of ourselves. It doesn't feel good to be a person who speaks like that. And Baruch Hashem, it seems here from the Medrash itself, right, that all of us will be able to have a refuah one day. And that can start today by, you know, working on ourselves. But understand the lesson that we learn from the snake is that those who speak Lashon Hara are often the ones who suffer the most from it because of how it colors our own personality and it hurts our own perception of ourselves. May we all succeed to be able to speak kindly of others, to praise others, to see the beauty in everybody around us. And unlike the snake, may we be able to help others see how we partner with God in making the world a better place. And not that we're trying to undermine what it is that God has created and what God is doing. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Chag Sameach again.